This is Senator Adam Ollier. Uh, this is Senator Adam Ollier, and uh, this is my weekly Facebook Live. I uh, just wanted to kind of update you on all the things that we've got going on, things that have been going on in the office. Uh, first up is uh, had a, had my bill passed uh, last weekend. Unfortunately, it was not signed into law uh, by the governor when she did her signing ceremony because the legislature hasn't sent it to her. So I'm really hoping that that happens soon. It's really important. So Senate Bill 117 would allow military and overseas uh, spouses to vote in this, this election electronically because of all the delays with the mail, because of the pandemic, because of a whole host of reasons, it's now more important than it has been ever, even though this is a best practice and a policy and something that absolutely needs to be done. So really looking forward to uh, Senate Bill 117 making its way over to the uh, governor's desk for her signature so it can be signed into law and uh, our service members who are stationed overseas can begin to vote. It's going to be critical. It's something that we should absolutely be making a priority, and I'm committed uh, to doing and looking forward to that. Uh, Senate Bill 898, which is uh, the telehealth bill that I just had go up in the legislature. Uh, we had our very first uh, committee hearing just uh, Wednesday in the Health Policy Committee. I think it went really well. We had a lot of uh, local partners uh, to include Authority Health. Uh, we had the uh, physical therapists. We had... Um, just a whole host of individuals that know how important telehealth has been and how the governor's executive orders have made an expanded coverage and made it a possibility for people who previously didn't have that option, previously did not have the ability to do telehealth. And so we're really excited about it. Um, it's got a couple changes. We're going to be continuing to tighten it up. But I'm hopeful and optimistic that we're going to be able to get it done and get it done in the next couple of weeks, ideally uh, before the uh, election as we, as we think about just how critical it can be um, going forward. So it, it's a really exciting time. It, it, it went really well in committee, uh, and I think we got a lot of support for that. So uh, if you've got questions or thoughts about Senate Bill 898, we had its first committee uh, just a couple days ago, and we'll be continuing to work on it. It allows for parity and payment so that uh, service providers are able to continue to bill the same amount in person as they would on remote visits because that will allow them to better do that. We know that because of telehealth, a number of individuals who have transportation issues have been able to get services that they would otherwise not have been. Uh, the no-show rate in a number of these clinics has decreased. So it's overall been really good for care and really good for um, our constituents. So uh, the next few things is uh, Senate Bill 886 and 911 were passed out of the Senate today. Uh, unfortunately, they were tie bar to some uh, business immunity bills that, that still need a lot of work, uh, but these make a huge difference uh, as we talk about, again, the governor's executive orders not having um, been, valid, been invalidated back in the May. And the reason that's so important is because uh, under a previous legislature, uh, they decreased the number of weeks that people are eligible for unemployment from 26 weeks down to 20 weeks, and the governor's executive order increased that number from 20 weeks back to 26 weeks. And that 26 week threshold is important because that would that is what made a number of Michiganders eligible for enhanced unemployment benefits. So if you received unemployment benefits uh, throughout that process, particularly the pandemic unemployment, so the PUA, uh, which was that additional cash payment, none of those individuals would have been eligible because Michigan did not offer uh, the 26 week threshold. And so that has to happen retroactively these bills have to pass. Uh, and so it was a political game to include uh, a tie bar, which says that these bills can't pass unless those business immunity bills pass. So kind of frustrating day where we went back and forth. But hopefully we'll be able to get rid of this tie bar going forward and really get um, the unemployment fixes done that need to be done. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, and, and that kind of leads me right into Governor Whitmer's response to the Supreme Court. So uh, this past Friday, uh, the Supreme Court answered a legal question for a federal court, which ruled not that the governor had exceeded her authority or done anything illegal or any of those kind of things. So if you've heard that, that's not what happened. What happened was the Supreme Court said that the legislature uh, unconstitutionally granted too much power to the governor. And so the orders that she took in lawful accordance with those orders uh, was unconstitutional. And that caused a whole host of issues. Uh, that have not yet been completely ironed out. 
And so the legislature should be here working to solve some of these issues. Um, but the House hasn't been in because they had a, a member who tested positive for COVID-19 uh, and a number of individuals who were not wearing masks in that space. So their exposure was significant. And so they have not yet met, and we're, we're hoping that they'll come back in next week and we'll be able to get to the important work of addressing some of these issues that we've had, that the legislature has had all summer to address. It hasn't happened. And so the governor is continuing to uh, provide for some of the safety issues and, and doing some of these kind of things and looking at other spaces where they have the authority to do so. So you'll uh, continue to see them using the public health code, code uh, which is where they are finding justification for the continued mask mandate, uh, some additional population requirements or, or occupancy rules, and a variety of um, health and occupational safety things. So the governor is continuing to do everything she can within her power to keep Michiganders safe and to keep our COVID-19 uh, positive rate down as low as possible so that we can continue to move around safely. And so uh, keep looking out for some of those things as they continue to come around. Uh, if you have questions about what is the law, what is not the law, and, and all those kind of things, please feel free to uh, send us a note here, reach out. Uh, we're, I'm very happy to do all those kind of things. Um, going back to the district, we've got a uh, coat drive in Highland Park from 11 to 3 at George Washington Carver uh, Academy. So again, Highland Park this Saturday, 11 to 3, got a coat drive at George Washington Carver. I know uh, former Councilwoman Glenda McDonald is going to be there and excited and, and getting coats out. I, I know today is warm and unseasonally warm, and we're all hoping for a uh, nice warm fall and a mild winter, but there are a lot of folks who, who don't have coats. And, and if you have one of those issues, if you need some of those kind of things, we know that because of the pandemic, there are a lot of people who aren't working. There are a lot of just costs and expenses that, that are gonna be difficult to bear. And so Saturday, 11 to three over at George Washington Carver will be an opportunity to get um, coats at this giveaway. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, I look forward to seeing you and you know, let's continue to support good things. If you've got good events going on in the second Senate district, that we can continue to uh, highlight. We'll do those in not only the Thursday Facebook Live, which is what we're doing right now, but also making sure that they get in our newsletter and that we post on social media. So if you have some of those events, please make sure that you are off. Uh, last night, I got the uh, unique and fun opportunity with the uh, Jack and Jill of Detroit chapter to uh, moderate the debate with some young folks. As we talked about, you know, civic engagement, why government matters, what the differences in all these spaces are, and, and just how to how to be engaged in our governmental process. So for all the folks who, who tuned in last night, uh, it was interesting. Uh, but I was really grateful to see, uh, you know, 20-some uh, teenagers invested in the process, right, and, and engaging and getting engaged in government, thinking about, you know, what we should be doing, how we can do those kind of things. And throughout this process, uh, as partisan as things have gotten, I think it's really important for us to, to zero in on the ways that government can work for us, the way that we require it to do so, and uh, just in general, the things that we are or are not getting from government. And so last night, uh, our democracy was on display, and uh, people got to decide if that's what they want to see, if, if that's what they like, and, and if they feel good about where we're going. I think we have a long way to go to restoring decency and decorum, and... Uh, I know many of you do too. So we all play a role in that. And much of it is in how we teach and raise the next generation to engage in this process and continue to do so. so um, I was grateful to be able to do that. Big thank you to uh, the Jack and Jill Detroit chapter for allowing me to moderate that, that discussion and uh, looking forward to more uh, opportunities to do some more things. Uh, as we kind of, you know, before COVID-19, we were doing our monthly town halls about some of the pressing issues. We're gonna be doing two this month. Uh, we're going to do a virtual informational only piece uh, on Proposition N uh, in Detroit, the $250 million bond initiative. That's going to be October 20th at noon. We will have individuals providing information only uh, in the pro side and the uh, opposed side. Once again, that will be Prop N informational October 20th at noon. Uh, we're also going to do some small business association, uh, or small business administration uh, resources on October 22nd at 6 p.m. Uh, you can get all the details by uh, subscribing to my e-newsletter, following us on the social media platform so that you get uh, kind of all these. Uh, in this vein, if you've got a topic that you're interested in that you want us to be talking about, please let us know. Reach out. You can uh, let us know on social media. You can shoot us an email. 
uh, those are the best ways to kind of connect with us. And we'd be happy to put on um, another piece to have these kind of virtual discussions as uh, we are all socially distancing uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, the last thing I wanna bring up is um, today, uh, you, you saw the governor announce a plot by uh, at least 13 individuals who were arrested today who were seeking to violently overthrow the uh, state government. Uh, they had plans, uh, had been practicing, and had started the acquisition process of weapons and explosives to violently overthrow the government by kidnapping the governor, by storming the state capitol uh, with the usage of armed, uh, by armed means. And that's scary, right? And it, it's unacceptable. It, it is not safe, it's not okay. But that is the, the world that we are living in today where um, people have been encouraged and, and pushed into these spaces where we tolerate violent extremism. And that's completely unacceptable. So uh, my colleague, Dana Polhanke, and uh, Senator Rosemary Bayer, the two of them introduced legislation uh, earlier this week that I was a co-sponsor on to remove firearms from the Capitol. Two of the individuals who were arrested today came to the Capitol with loaded rifles earlier this year uh, as part of um, protests and, and demonstrations. They protested with armed uh, or with loaded rifles in front of the governor's home, governor's residence, uh, have done so in the Capitol, have been in the office building that I am standing in uh, right now and in the Capitol, sitting in the gallery looking down upon us and my colleagues. Uh, this is the world that we are living in. It is the climate that we are operating in. And it is deeply concerning that we still have elected leaders at the national level who have not condemned the kind of violent extremism that we see today. And so I'm grateful that the leadership in the Senate, uh, both the majority leader and the minority leader, have come together in condemning uh, this type of activity and pushing back on it. What we need to do now is take action and pass um, Senator Polhanke and Senator Bayer's legislation to ban firearms in the Capitol to ensure that our democratic institutions are safe and remain safe because their plan was to storm the Capitol by force and hold members of the legislature and the governor hostage to take them to another state, to hold them for trial uh, for crimes that they consider uh, as, as tyranny and, and all these kind of things. That's the, that's the country we live in. That's the state we live in. That is the climate that we are operating in. And it's got to change. And so for all those who think that it is okay to have the kind of political rhetoric where they say, Oh, well, you know, they're going to kill so-and-so or, or, you know, this means blood or all those kind of things. It's time to stop all that. It's time to stop all that because though you may be speaking in hyperbole, you are encouraging people who are thinking for real. You are encouraging people who are going to be training to uh, level explosives, to shoot and commit murder, to do these kind of things, and promoting terrorism. Uh, my family is, uh, my dad's side family is from Oklahoma. I was in Oklahoma the day of the Oklahoma City bombings, and it was not a great time to have Michigan plates in another state. It has not been a good time for people talking about the Michigan militia and all those kind of things. And so as someone who serves actively in the military, uh, this is not how you are a patriot. This is not what we serve for. This is not what is meant to be done. So stop. Stop encouraging it. Stop supporting it. Stop liking it. Stop passing those kind of things. And when you see people making threats like this, when you see people talking about it, believe them and say something. Because if somebody hadn't said something in this situation, we very easily could have been talking about uh, a situation where there are armed assailants in the Capitol, where, the, where members of the state police were murdered or shot as they were trying to protect me, the governor, the speaker, majority leader, any host of individuals who work in this Capitol. It's got to be time out for this kind of violent political rhetoric. So um, please play your part. Uh, get out and vote. Uh, do all those kind of things. Absentee ballots are, have been mailed. You can go to your local clerk to do that. There are a number of Dropbox locations to do those kind of things. That is where your voice is heard. That is how you exercise democracy. That is how you determine who is going to be your elected officials. 
It is not with violence. It is not with firearms. It is not with explosives. It is not with terrorism. It is with your ballot. So vote. Be counted. Uh, similarly, as you talk about being counted, uh, the census deadline, again, has been extended to the end of the month. If you have not been counted, please get counted. If you know anyone who, else, who hasn't been counted, please make sure they get counted. Just check in with all your friends and neighbors. We absolutely need it. So again, this is Senator Adam Ollier. Thank you so much uh, for showing up. And I appreciate all the comments. I'll check and see if we got any questions here. Uh, thanks, Ken and Janet, uh, for you know just showing up and and being a part of this conversation. You know, we do not always need to agree on everything, but our democracy does not work unless we are all here and present and accounted for and having spaces where we can have robust and honest discussions. So, again, thank you so much for showing up, and we'll uh, get back to work.